Well, good morning, my friends. If you watched my last vlog, I promised a little James Brown museum tour. So today we are at the Augusta Museum of History and we are gonna check out the James Brown exhibit, Days with Jordan the Lion. It begins now. Now as told on the tour, they have quite a bit to see here, James Brown's history. And I believe they have the most of anywhere there is to see James Brown memorabilia. All right, Augusta Museum of History, let's see what you got. All right, into the exhibit we go. So right back here, we have the James Brown exhibit, Godfather of Soul. Let's see what all they have. James Brown, known throughout the world as Godfather of Soul, had a significant influence on many genres of music, including R&B, gospel, funk, hip hop, and much more. His popularity was worldwide due to his music, but he was also remembered for his commitment to helping those less fortunate. This exhibit celebrates the man, his music, and his legacy. It says, I wanted to say to you, help yourself so you can help someone else. He grew up in Augusta in the Great Depression in World War II. He overcame poverty, segregation, to become an international music icon. Styling. Now check out this exhibit. This says that this was the shoe stand that James Brown, as a youngster, would shine shoes to make money on 9th Street, which is now James Brown Boulevard. Humble beginnings, baby, humble beginnings. I'll take a look, it's one of James Brown's Bibles. So he had, most rooms of his house had a Bible and this was in the room adjacent to his dining room. There's James Brown's Georgia Bulldog mug and Dooley's Junkyard Dogs, seven inch, 45. James Brown wrote this song for his friend Vincent Dooley, football coach for the University of Georgia. Now we're getting to the important stuff. The smooth sheen right there. Gotta make that hair look good, baby. Then we also have some Rejuvenatone. Salon Formula Color Rinse. And then uh, the white container is his hair relaxer. And this can <laughs> is his hairspray. And there's sh some shea butter, one of his combs. That's great. And here we have some of James Brown's hand towels, his diabetes kit right there. That's interesting. He had asthma, so there's his asthma inhaler. Eternity for Men cologne. Tiger Palm pain reliever. All kinds of stuff in there. Sorry, Tiger Balm, I said. Tiger Palm. Then of course, some Maalox. Then this right on the end is one of James' coffee mugs that had the Ten Commandments on it. These were all from his personal collection of items. So check that out. That is, I can't tell, even when I was up close, it looks purple to me. Like a purple three-piece suit. You can see the, the vest in there. Yeah, that, and it's got red stitching going around the lapels, the red buttons, and he's got some suede boots down there. Yep, dancing in cowboy boots. Look at the tips on those, those are great, wow. He wasn't messing around. And that is one of his, oh, I guess that's denim. It looks kind of purple in here, but it says it's a denim suit, so. One of his 1980s denim suits. The King. Then when I took the tour, they kept reiterating how important family and education were to James. And uh, here's his family tree. And 
one of the things they told me on the tour that was really interesting, he said, you know, when, uh, when he was raising his kids, he was very, very, very adamant about education. And, you know, he made sure that they put it first. And so she said, you know, when they would get older, some of his kids would become educators, videographers, you know, people like that. They said he was really adamant about not relying or them not relying on him for a job when they got time to be a professional. He would give them a job, but he wanted to make sure they were experienced in something else so they would always have something else to do outside of him working for him. I mean, this right here is kind of why I love to do these kind of vlogs because it says I just thank God for it. Young people can look at me and say, okay, if James Brown made it, I can make it. I think that's the coolest thing about doing these vlogs, seeing people that started with nothing become incredible performers or influential people in the world. James Brown was married four times, had eight children, eight grandchildren, and four great-grandchildren. Many of his children have excelled in arts and sciences. Deanna Brown Thomas, a graduate of Columbia School of Broadcasting, is an entertainment reporter and radio personality. Dr. Yama Brown Lumar is a doctor. Daryl Brown is a leader of a band, The Soul Generals. Awesome. Oh, take a look at that. At the Apollo. Michael Jackson, Bruce Springsteen, the OJs. You can definitely see where Michael Jackson took a lot of his cues from James Brown, from the way he dressed to the way he danced. And there's Reverend Cleophas James. <laughs> if you remember uh, when James Brown was in the Blues Brothers, featured in uh, the Blues Brothers movie, he performed in there and that was right there, that was him. And then here, when they made the Blues Brothers 2000 movie, they had him back. And that was his on-set chair. They used Please, Please, Please movie soundtrack. And it said, Mr. James Brown reprised his role of Reverend Cleophas James in the movie sequel. Which I never saw. But that one is a classic. Absolute classic. So, entering the theater, we've got an old show poster here hot summer nights at the chilhowie park amphitheater james brown sound i didn't learn from nobody it's from me james was self-taught musician in 1953 he began his professional career with bobby bird's group the gospel starlighters who later changed their name to the flames their hit began with please 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 and then later with try me in the late 1950s, the group became known as James Brown and the Famous Flames. Their R&B sound soon developed into funk and soul and had profound worldwide musical influence. As an innovative performer, prolific songwriter, and record producer, Brown changed the music industry forever and paved the way for many performers, particularly hip-hop and rap artists. Look at that. Oh man, I'm seeing a lot of costumes. Including that one. Oh my god, can I take that home with me? <laughs> Look at that cape. That's almost floor length. <laughs> Probably was floor length on him, actually. And I love that one. That's definitely a 70s performance outfit. Yep. Orange jumpsuit with jacket from the 1970s. I don't know if anybody else thinks about it, but uh, I don't really, you know, think of James Brown when I think of the Blues Brothers. I think of him when I think of Dr. Detroit. That's, I think that's the first time I ever heard of James Brown was his performance in Dr. Detroit. Look at that vest, man. Nice. In person, well, on camera, this kind of looks orangish red, more red, but in person, it's a very light, rusty orange. And then right there is the 45 for Please, 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 released by the Famous Flames. Look at that label. 
the Augusta Sound, Augusta Recorders, Bring It On, Bring It On by James Brown. And then this one isn't a James Brown record, but he did produce it. That Lee Austin, the burner, he's the producer on this. You can see way down there his name. James Brown at the organ. And then the one on the right actually says James Brown and the Famous Flames. Now check out some of the musical instruments that help make some of those incredible records. Got a Ludwig drum kit here. You've got a Vox acoustic guitar up here. And these were all from his home. That uh, the last home that he had that they're kind of, from what I understand, they're still trying to figure out a way of doing like a Graceland type thing. It was on Beach Island in South Carolina, very secluded. These were all from that house. Rolling synth. Very cool. He probably played all those too himself. See this Heritage Festival where James Brown, Los Lobos, Etta James, Kevin Moe. Great lineups. <laughs> did ask on the tour what happened to his clothes and costumes, whether they sold them, auctioned them, what they did, and I was told that they kept most of them. They do loan them out to Hall of Fames and things like that occasionally, but they have tried to keep most everything. And you can see why I look great costumes. They also told me on the tour that right around, you know, the 1960s, his knees were pretty much shot from all the like jumping down and landing on his knees and everything, but he just like continued on and kept performing all the way through it. He was not gonna let it stop him or slow him down. Of course, the payback, that's a great one. That one makes it look like he's in prison. James Brown in the Jungle Groove. Gotta love that one. Santa's got a brand new bag. Now check that out, that poster is actually signed. Down here he wrote, now I feel good. And then it says, uh, to sis, to sis Pat and Danny, a little rest will do wonders. The Lord rests on the Sabbath. Let's go back and let the world know the real thing. See you all soon, James. It's a much different style of costuming for that day. That might be where Doggy Bounty Hunter got his style from. That open vest. I'm kidding. Oh, there we go. That's a great shot. Look at that. So now we're gonna check out the costumes that are on loan from the estate. And in this case, they have the James Brown doll that says that it's actually signed, which you can see. Let me see if I can show it to you, it's signed on the vest. I'm trying to get past the glare. It says that it was signed at the Imperial Theater, which we did go vlog yesterday after a rehearsal. There's his crown from the 1960s when he was crowned King of Soul. Here we've got some uh, James Brown's black silver tip boots, cowboy boots. Seems like he pretty much always was wearing those. Maybe not always, but a lot of the time he was into the cowboy boots. And look, the tips worn out, so he was using it for something. <laughs> and there's some green ankle boots. Those look like those could have been from the 70s as well. And the gold ones, gold lame boots. Those are great. The 
looked at the trim on that, you gotta believe that that's probably what those gold made boots went with. He's got his logo on there. You can see the JB. And look at that jacket. Wow. So that's another three piece suit. You got that intense jacket with the zip up vest in the middle. That's kind of like a matador cut, kind of. I think that's what they called those back then. It was kind of like his matador look. And there we've got one of James Mears. <laughs> Floor length mirror, because you gotta look good when you're the king of soul. Gotta make sure that hair is on fleek. And look at that. That blue. That blue suit there. Man, he always looked like a million bucks. I did ask on the tour, I was like kind of curious, because I know Prince had like one person that really made all his clothes and Elvis had icy costumes that made his. I said, did James just have like one person that made his? And they, they said, I we really don't even know. <laughs> They're gonna ask about that, maybe add that to the tour. There's that logo again. No, it's like a different style logo. There we've got some killer blue cowboy boots with no silver tip. And then I thought these were gym shoes, but they're not. Platform shoes. You can see the heel back there. But from the front, they look like something you'd wear out jogging to me. The laces, I'm not sure about that. Should have had zippers. And then you got some black leather boots right there. And on that green suit, man, look how tiny his waist was. Now look at this poster. This would have been a great show. Chuck Berry, James Brown, Ray Charles, Bo Diddley, Fats Domino, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Little Richard. I mean, who the heck could you forget? <laughs> and let me ask you this. When do you take a bathroom break? You don't miss any of those. And I love what it says on this wall. It says, when I'm on stage, I'm trying to do one thing, bring people joy, just like the church does. People don't go to church to find trouble. They go there to lose it. Here they're showing off some of his famous record covers, record jackets. It's a really cool show poster right there. Now right there you've got some all access passes from his seven decades of funk tour. And then right over here, you have some of his backstage passes from various concerts. And here we have his 2000 tour book. And on the right is the 2002 tour book. And this was for a concert giveaway. Now here we've got an accommodation from the Department of Defense. And it says it's a certificate of appreciation for your outstanding contribution to the morale and welfare of the United States and other free world military. Now if you watch the movie there's kind of a funny scene where he's going to entertain the troops and he gets off the plane they're like okay Mr. Brown you got 30 minutes allotted for you to perform then we got to get you out of here and he looks at him and goes don't nobody tell James Brown how long he performs and he goes out there and does his thing. <laughs> Speaking of he's doing his thing there so much the hair's getting all tussled and like I said Drop into the knees. They're putting the K 
cape on him. And then right there they have one of James Hammond harmonicas. Proud to be black. I hope through the press and through word of mouth, people you'll know that James Brown didn't love black or white. He loved people wrong or right. Right there in the picture, you'll see James with another one of his custom suits. And that logo that we saw on one of the other ones is right there. James Brown on the cover of Augusta Magazine. This would have been, looks like 1991 it says. There's a great cartoon of him. And another cartoon. And then... James on the cover of Emerge. Now this is great, there's the James Brown statue with James at the unveiling of it. And I put that in the vlog that we just did, the last vlog. So if you wanna see what that looks like, go watch that one. Al Sharpton, James Brown right there. And here they're naming it James Brown Boulevard. Here he is on dedication day. Look at that hair. That's amazing. That's got some serious lift to it. Looking good, James. In memory of James. If you watched the vlog they mentioned yesterday in the last vlog that they had three services for him. The Apollo here, private service for the family and there are all the programs from all of those. You can see that this one over here is the one at the Apollo. Down at the bottom it says officiated by Reverend Al Sharpton. Um, the next one says the same thing, Reverend Al Sharpton, but that's the one in Augusta and this one was for the family in Augusta. And you'll see all those people sign that flag, leaving messages to him. Statue after he passed away, you can see that flag draped around him. And these were all memorials. You can see another photo of the memorial. And you can see the tribute to James after he passed away at the Hollywood Walk of Fame. People all over the world mourned his death. It's sad because he died on Christmas Day. If you remember, 2006 Christmas Day. So this was all things that mourners left. If you can see what it says on the wall, it says, I've outdone anyone you can name. Mozart, Beethoven, Bach, Strauss, Irving Berlin. He wrote 1,001 tunes. I wrote 5,500. And here we have some of his honorations. Payne College, Doctoral Hood, right there. And also his cap. in 2006 and then Bootsy Collins gave James Brown that plaque the plaque says Mr. James Brown September 1984 your influence on Bootsy and the world keeps our feet padding and our hearts throbbing and of course if you know James's history he put Bootsy and his brothers in his band they were part of James Band for a while till they just up and quit. <laughs> that says that is a silver medal star presented to James Brown and the Republican Presidential Task Force medal. He's a lifelong member of the Republican Party. 
And then this is showcasing the movie they made about James Brown's life, which did have some liberties taken, dramatic liberties taken, that weren't necessarily all accurate, but it's a great movie. And Chadwick Boseman plays James Brown, and does a fantastic job. And here you can see some more awards. You've got the UK Music Hall of Fame Award. James Brown was inducted in 2006. And then you've got right here his Grammy medal. 24th Annual Grammy Award 1982 telecast. And then here's a Mojo Award, Lifetime Achievement Award. Now that one back there's a big one. That's the Martin Luther King Jr. Humanitarian Award. And then that is James Brown's Grammy for Best R&B Performance of Living in America, 1986. If you look on the back, you can see his name. Nice. And then there's a funny picture of James Brown and Jackie Chan during the making of the movie Tuxedo. There's James Brown performing with Charlie Daniels and James Brown and MC Hammer. <laughs> and this is really cool. This is a poster for the 911 concert, the 911 concert they had to raise money in 2001. And it's got Michael Jackson, Aerosmith, Backstreet Boys, James Brown, Al Green. This is a pretty great museum. I highly recommend you come check it out, especially if you love James Brown. You will love this place. They have so much to see. And there they've got a Prisoner of Love piece of sheet music signed by James Brown. And then over here in this part of the museum, they actually have another James Brown outfit right there, that purple one. Handmade suit, baby. Fitting of a star. All right, on our way out, I have to stop by this little penny machine because I think I need a pinched penny of James Brown. All right. Make my penny. There it is. Pretty cool. I certainly enjoyed myself here today. I don't know about you guys, but I did. All right, my friends, what a great day. I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Until next time, have a great night. And thank you, Ricardo Medici, Nair, Kim Nolan Molina, Sonia Garden, RV, Deborah Douglas, Casey Hacklemiller, and Deborah for becoming my newest Patreons. Have a great night. And goodbye from Augusta. Mm -hmm.